Who says there's no democracy in China? Take a look at Hanzhou's People's Democratic Experience Center. Here, visitors can not only experience voting but also participate in the National People's Congress, embodying the Chinese style of democracy. However, all of this is virtually simulated using a VR experience system. News reports have previously covered a town in Shandong Province launching a VR experience, which uses virtual reality to test the party spirit of Chinese Communist Party members. Participants answer questions in a virtual environment, and if they score too low, they must undergo consultation and reflection. Revisiting the oath of joining the party. However, despite the widespread use of VR as a brainwashing educational tool by the CCP authorities, it has not solved the developmental difficulties of VR technology in China. Moreover, with the economic slowdown this year and successive crises in real estate and finance, many VR companies have started to falter. At the end of October, ByteDance, the parent company of China's TikTok, reportedly planned significant staff reductions and organizational restructuring for its VR company, Pico. Pico Technology was established in 2015 and primarily focused on developing VR technology, interactive techniques, and VR applications. In September 2021, amidst the tech industry's optimistic outlook for the future of VR, Pico was acquired by ByteDance. At that time, Pico was the world's third largest producer of VR headsets, according to shipment data. This acquisition garnered considerable attention, as many believe that ByteDance, known for content creation through TikTok, combined with the hardware expertise of Pico, would soon secure a significant place in the global VR field. However, the VR trend abruptly stalled. From the perspective of technological development, VR still cannot perfectly render a sense of reality and immersion, and the related equipment is costly. Slow content product development, despite some excellent VR applications and games, has failed to attract more users. Additionally, the CCP's stringent censorship of information and comprehensive control over privacy data have made it difficult for Chinese VR game developers to progress. According to data, China's VR market saw a 56% decrease in shipments within a year, with Pico, which held half the market share, experiencing at least a 50% drop in shipments in the first half of 2023 alone. When the news of Pico's layoffs broke in late October, ByteDance initially denied it. However, at the same time, former Douyin founder Ren Li Feng, who supported content creation at Pico, was reported to be leaving the company, with his internal system status showing. On leave for a long time, many commentators believe that ByteDance, parent company of Douyin, might be planning to give up on Pico. Inside sources indicated that Wu Zhongmin would replace Ren Li Feng as a vice president of Pico, taking charge of the content culture department. Additionally, several executives, including the head of the original Douyin Reality Show Department, Song Binghua, and Pico's video live broadcast and content product managers, who had moved from Douyin to Pico with Ren, either returned to Douyin or left the company. On November 7th, Pico held a staff meeting announcing organizational adjustments, confirming that previous rumors were not unfounded. At the meeting, Pico's president Zhou Hongwei announced significant layoffs and substantial personnel adjustments in Pico's market, gaming, video, and live broadcast teams. Zhou stated in the meeting that after recent careful consideration of the launched business and market situation, the basic judgment. Is that the VR industry is in a very early stage? The previous estimates for the industry's development were overly optimistic, but in reality, it has not progressed as quickly as expected. Pico plans to merge its mobile OS team into ByteDance's product research and engineering organization, retaining only a small part of the hardware team. This move is expected to affect over 300 employees, approximately 23 percent of the total workforce. Pico made the following Weibo statement. Adjusting the organizational structure aims to better focus on the long-term exploration and breakthroughs in hardware and core technology, with a greater determination to create long-term value. This is not the first time Pico has undergone large-scale layoffs. Earlier this year, it was rumored that Pico had cut most of its sales team, sparking widespread attention. Although ByteDance quickly denied these rumors, they have not been completely quelled. Internal employees say that although rumors of layoffs were persistent. The announcement by ByteDance of staff redundancies on November 7th still came as a shock. At the time, Pico was preparing to launch a new product, a fisheye lens for mobile VR live streaming, expected to be released by the end of the year. VR live streaming is one of Pico's main product highlights this year, as it currently has hardware but lacks a rich array of games and applications. Therefore, Pico has been investing heavily in the VR live streaming in hopes of finding a new breakthrough. Everyone has high expectations for this product. Additionally, Pico plans to release XR, extended reality products next year, 
making a leap from VR to XR. So why did ByteDance founder Zhang Yiming suddenly lose patience with Pico? Firstly, Pico was burning through cash at an alarming rate. In 2021, ByteDance spent a whopping 9 billion yuan, approximately 120 million US dollars, to outbid Tencent and acquire Pico, gaining an entry ticket to the metaverse. Following this, ByteDance continued to pour significant funds into research and development, marketing and operations. At a business association symposium in Beijing, a ByteDance executive reportedly claimed they were prepared to burn through 30 billion yuan for their VR venture. Former Pico's employees revealed that ByteDance's cumulative investment into Pico might have reached around 20 billion yuan, approximately 2.75 billion US dollars. For every Pico device sold, the company was losing about 1,000 to 3,000 yuan, approximately 138 dollars to 413 US dollars. Despite heavy investment and growth into Pico's business, the entire industry has not seen a significant breakthrough. Data shows that in the second quarter of 2022, Pico's shipments were 260,000 units, nearly an eightfold increase year on year. In terms of market share, Pico's domestic VR market share reached 70%, and its global market share increased from 0.99% in the first quarter of 2021 to 11% in the second quarter of 2022. By these numbers, Pico's performance was not too bad. However, the entire AR VR industry faced a steep decline. According to Runto's 2023 AR VR equipment semi annual sales report, in the second quarter of 2023, the total sales volume of China's VR AR market was only 178,000 units, a 51% year on year decrease. VR equipment sales dropped even more drastically, with a year on year decline of 61%. Pico failed to make timely strategic adjustments. The VR industry relies on popular content, but its applications and content development have consistently underperformed. Reports indicate that Pico's application store has about 530 apps, lagging behind overseas competitors. Moreover, with a global shift towards artificial intelligence in 2023, generative AI became hugely popular with the rise of ChatGPT. The technology industry shifted massive resources into the AI field, leading to a significant decrease in the attention to AR, VR. The entire industry slowed down, and even with Pico's substantial investment in development, it struggled to create more opportunities. Developers failing to attract users, no matter how promising the future, do not bring profitability to the company. A Pico technician mentioned, currently VR development requires a team of over 100 people for hardware and software, with continuous investment needed in design and manufacturing, content production, and algorithm optimization. If a company lacks financial strength and production power, after years of investment, it may face financial difficulties and need long-term investment and patience. Not just Pico, Tencent also reduced its VR team after the Chinese New Year this year to focus on hardware equipment. IGE's VR hardware company, Dreams Come True, reportedly started defaulting on salaries since March, with layoffs affecting up to 50% of the department. The remaining staff is less than 100, and the laid-off employees have not received compensation, making their situation extremely dire. Microsoft also misjudged the VR development trajectory. In February this year, Microsoft disbanded its industrial metaverse team, established just four months prior, along with its 100 members. After layoffs at the end of 2022, Facebook's parent company Meta also announced multiple rounds of layoffs this year and slowed down hiring to continue cost-cutting. The metaverse year, hyped by these tech giants, burst in less than two years. Once regarded as a leading domestic VR enterprise, Pico has reportedly shrunk from a peak of 2,000 employees to less than half. The building where its offices are located, once brightly lit, now only a few windows emit light at night, a development that is profoundly disheartening. After ByteDance abandoned its metaverse project, questions arise about its future direction. In the past two years, due to COVID and U.S. regulations, ByteDance has faced growth challenges. Last year, there were reports of the company laying off 10% of its staff, amounting to over 10,000 employees. There are also rumors of employees not receiving year-end bonuses and conflicts within the Human Resources Department, but ByteDance denied these rumors. ByteDance CEO Liang Rubo recently admitted to the company's 11th anniversary meeting, in the past one or two years, our lead is not as clear, and we can't confidently say that we are doing better than our peers. Its subsidiary TikTok, known in China as Douyin, has also faced hurdles in the United States due to national security concerns, with threats of being blocked or banned. Recently, it was discovered that TikTok spent over 3.7 million US dollars on federal lobbying, exceeding the expenses of Google and Apple and second only to Facebook. 
In response, both Democratic and Republican lawmakers have written to the Department of Justice, urging them to classify TikTok as a foreign agent. Even the Biden administration has repeatedly asked ByteDance to sell its shares to ensure it no longer has substantial influence over TikTok. U.S. Republican Congressman Mike Gallagher said, "For over a year, we have been considering the best approach to TikTok. The fundamental issue with TikTok is that it is owned by ByteDance." Gallagher pointed out that this is a core issue of social media platform ownership. Whether the American public wants the CCP to have the ability to control a platform that the majority of young Americans use to get news, thereby influencing U.S. politics and society. However, having lost the lead in the metaverse, it is now unlikely that ByteDance will easily give up on TikTok, its golden goose overseas. As tensions between China and the U.S. continue, the evolving trajectory of ByteDance holds significant implications, not only for technological progress but also as a key determinant in shaping global dynamics. Navigating this complex landscape represents ByteDance's most formidable challenge yet.